yes, once best. again, good evening to the entire world. Grace, peace, and mercy be on to you. Nothing lacking, nothing broken. Uh, welcome to Health Watch. Uh, I am Vivian, the host of Real Talk, and Tamika, my co-host, who is going to be at the forefront tonight. Uh, yes, single and waiting. Wow. Uh, a hot topic indeed. Uh, yes, single and waiting. Uh, yes, what are you doing? Uh, is your flesh bothering you while you're waiting? Uh, we're going to talk about it tonight. Get on real talk. about you but when I was nothing he turned me into something look at how beautiful I am uh, yes remember I told you you gotta speak it man I am a beautiful black girl I don't need nobody to tell me that <laughs> He turned me to something. Isn't that right, uh, my co-host? I told her today, you know oh, what? Oh, yes. Pepper and she is salt. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. We are going to have a show. Keep it locked. Go tell somebody. Real Talk is on. Uh, yes, indeed. It is a hot topic. Single and waiting. Uh, are you burning while you're waiting? Are you enjoying your singleness? Uh, what's going on? We're going to talk about it. Uh, we're just waiting for a little bit. Uh, we're going to do our greetings and big up everybody. Uh, yes. Are you single, by the way? Uh, give me a thumbs up if you are, because if you are, uh, we might just pull on you tonight. Uh, to the beautiful Charlene, good evening. Uh, I know that you're single and waiting. Uh, glory to God. At least I don't know if anything happened over the last couple days. Uh, but yeah, single and waiting. Uh, we're gonna open. We're gonna open the lines. Uh, grace, mercy, and peace be unto the entire world. Uh, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Uh, good night to Lagos. Uh, yes, good night to Tobago uh, and Trinidad. Uh, glory to God. Good night, uh, Jamaica. Uh, yes, uh, I wish I was there just about now. Uh, glory to God. Good night to those of you down there in the United States. Uh, good night uh, to Antigua. Good night, Canada. Uh, yes, come on. For those of you in the room, uh, you can tell him 
Uh, yes, shout. Let us hear some hallelujah. He is the best thing. Uh, yes. We're going to get started soon. He's the best thing. He's the best thing. Ever happened to me. Jesus is the best thing yes uh that is so true when you beautiful indeed watching on our YouTube channel. Uh, good night. Oh, yes. just want to give him praise today. We want to magnify him uh, tonight and to glorify him. Welcome to Health Watch. Uh, glory to God with uh, myself, the host of Real Talk, uh, Tamika, the co-host. Uh, we just want to thank uh, those of you who are joining us, those of you who are behind the scenes. Uh, we want to uh, thank those of you who watch the replay. Uh, glory to God. We have uh, a little treat for you. The topic is single and waiting. Why, Minnie Nona? 
this is going to be a topic. God, God, I wonder if I'm going to be able to talk too much. Um, I want to publicly say that um, I'm kind of off of the market, you know. So I don't know how much I can talk about the single thing. What are you expect from me? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do our best by the grace of God. <laughs> so, um, I, I don't know about the single thing and I don't want to, you know, I kind of want to reserve all my little stuff for my own little personal interview, but, um, me sit under the hot seat and pretend that I'm a single tonight, um, or what I was doing when I was single. <laughs> but anyways, good night to real talk a good night to all our viewers from around the world, wherever you are. Uh, remember Jesus is Lord. Uh, we just want to welcome all our YouTube viewers. Yes, remember to subscribe and hit that bell uh, that you get all those notifications. I love saying that. Ain't Tamika? Uh, yes, subscribe and hit that bell. Uh, yes, for our YouTube channel. So again, on behalf of myself, Tamika will do her greeting. I just want to welcome you. Go ahead, Tamika. Uh, you want to welcome our viewers around the world. Uh, yeah. Oh, and by the way, uh, before you welcome them, I have a giveaway tonight, Tamika. I forgot to mention to you, I have a giveaway. I am willing, and when we open the lines, um, yep, we'll do that. Uh, yes, to the first caller uh, that will tell us maybe something about what them do when them singleness, but that keep them calm, uh, the cold shower, whatever, I don't know, but anyway. <laughs> uh, so I have a book, um, Woman Rising. Uh, it's a collaboration of myself and four of the authors that came together a couple years ago. Uh, yep, I'm willing to give that book away. Uh, yes, to our first caller uh, when the question goes out. Um, yep, uh, we'll give that book to you and I will autograph it myself. Uh, yep, uh, go ahead, Tamika. Welcome our guests. Well, greetings, everyone, and a blessed night. Thank you for tuning in tonight to Health Watch. Oh, yes. We're talking about single and waiting. We want to know, are you single and satisfied or single and unsatisfied? We'll hear from you guys tonight if you want to call in. But I want to say welcome to everyone for tuning in tonight. I see Juliet. Good night to Prophetess Winnie. Oh, we've got a new, um, we've got a new viewer uh, from Prince. He says, hi, everyone. This is my first time on this program. Well, good night. His other name is Osborne. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. And I know where he is. It's almost, it's actually after midnight. So thank you for joining us tonight. Greetings to author Tanisha Smith for joining us. I don't know anybody else. I can't, that I don't know who they are, but um, welcome to everyone. And I, we just hope that you're going to enjoy yourself tonight. We're, we're here to, um, it's going to be a night of laughter and real talk. And we're here really just to share our own um, uh, history, our own stories, our own tips. Um, of, I, won't, I won't share, I won't, I won't spoil what we're going to be talking about too much. So just stay tuned. Glory to God. Yes, we don't want to spoil it. We want them to sit at the edge of their seat and we want them to invite people, like and share. Um, yeah, that somebody could get a good laugh and somebody could get blessed and somebody could say, listen, um, it's okay to be single. It's okay to enjoy uh, your singleness. Uh, glory to God. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So again, welcome to everyone. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, so this is where I am going to actually turn uh, the show over to my co-host, um, which is going to gradually take us into the show. We have a surprise guest that's going to come on later. Uh, glory to God. And I'm going to be, what am I going to be? Yeah, I'm going to be the, I don't want to say guinea pig, but uh, yeah, I'm going to be the punching bag tonight. All right. Give it up for Tamika tonight. Yes, <laughs> I'm in a passenger seat. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we're, I'm not sure which side of the coin we're going to we're going to be um, uh, really advocating for because we've been on both sides. You know, we've been on the taken side. We've been on the almost married side. We've been on, <laughs> we're on the single side. We're also on the wanting to be married side. We've been on all sides, right, Vivian? The married but single side. <laughs> oh yes oh yes oh yes so vivian vivian um i was gonna ask so how are you number one let the world know are you single or are you taking oh honesty tell the <laughs> truth genie in the bottle what do real I talk do? real talk, <laughs> real talk. <laughs> okay i can publicly say that i am definitely spoken for but I don't want to spoil my interview. Oh, okay. 
Okay, all right. But I can still okay. speak. I can still share. All right. We won't, be, we, won't be, we won't be trying to auction you off tonight because we don't know. We don't know. You never know. And you guys know Christian talk. She could be talking, but she's spoken for by the Lord. You know, we just never know what kind of, what kind of talk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what <that> is. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, if if we don't know if you're single, okay. All right. So I'm going to throw some other questions out. Some other questions out. All right. All right. But let me just ask. Go ahead. No, ask me. I'm, I'm good to answer. Put do you, do you find that it, as one that's been taken, one that has, I don't know if you've played around or just been in non, um, or, or, uh, you know, but, um, oh yes, Valentine's Day just passed. We had a panel talking about uh, love or in love. So right. I was going to say as one who has um, been in relationships, whether they were in love relationships or just love relationships, and even one that's been been single, we don't know if you're single right now. Which what would you say? Which relationship do you think is is um, is the most fulfilling relationship? Well, you know, I think for me, I'm gonna talk for it for me. When I really got to really enjoy my singleness, enjoy myself, uh, you know, something to say, many persons are single. And as you said, we talked earlier today that, you know, they're bored. They don't know what to do. Uh, but being single is fun. You know, something to say, it is fun. Talk Listen, I'm going to talk up because let me tell you something. When you are single and you live by yourself and you make up your bed, you understand your toilet seat covered, you understand your dishes washed and all that stuff, you know what I mean? You don't have to worry that you're gonna get up in the night and go to the washroom and you're dropping at the toilet. <laughs> You understand what you're say? And also, when you're single, you just love your space. You understand? Mm. You don't have to worry about anybody invading your space. You know what I'm trying to say? You make your decisions freely. So, I mean, I liked that. You understand what I'm saying? That, you know what? Um, yeah, but you like that when you're single too. You know, you can see somebody you're walking and kind of turn your head a little bit. You know what I'm trying to say? So, I mean, real talk. That's, that's it, it's, it's good to be it's good to enjoy your singleness. Uh, you understand what I'm trying to say? Because at the end of the day, uh, we got to be careful when we get into that space of somebody else and somebody gets into our space. Are we really ready for that? And some people aren't. So I always say, in the in the time of me being single, where's the time I love myself? Where's the time I, I just thought about me? You understand what I'm trying to say? Did me, worked on me. Uh, so it was, it was good those years that... Um, Oh Lord, when I was single, yeah. All right, all right. Let's talk about some. We don't want to. We're not saying being being tangled up is not a good thing. So let's talk about some some benefits of being with someone. Well, to be honest, having that person when you come from work. You understand? And we're talking about, remember we talked about, you know, um, you have to be attracted to somebody, you have to be intimate. You understand? When you come from work, it's nice to have somebody there. Uh, you understand? Even to talk to, and those of us who have children, our children are grown. Uh, like for me, my daughter is grown, married, has her own family. So, I mean, you know, when you get home, you want to see that person there. You want to have that person to talk to. You want that person to rub your foot. Uh, you understand? I'm trying to say, you know, much times, you know, I'm lotion myself, I'm a wall, lotion, my back, my hand shot. <laughs> my hands cannot reach my back. You understand what I'm trying to say? So, you're back to back to back. <laughs> so, you know, and those, you know, so those are the benefits. And then also, you know, somebody to fellowship with, uh, somebody to come in agreement with prayer, you know, on the spiritual side. And somebody just to watch a movie and laugh with, like laugh and to your belly bust, you understand? Just to be silly with. Uh, yeah, so there's some nice benefits with um, with being with somebody. Yes, when he says to buy a brush. Well, you know, enough time I hear, I hear some guys say they don't want somebody to rub your back. Well, I'm, I'm so sorry. God bless everyone, long run. Long, long, it reached weariness. So honestly, if it reach a <laughs> well, good for you. And to the person that says to buy a brush, the brush does not give you that same feeling. The and, and exactly, you want to feel that warmth, and you want to be able to say that spot right there, a little yes, bit it's over. Up over there, so. <laughs> so, Winnie, I hope you're not using a brush. You need to get some. <laughs> 
when you're single, we really didn't know we're gonna get a thumbs up. <laughs> Very good. Uh, you spoke about work uh, when you're by yourself, working on yourself. Can I ask you, what kind of things can you work on as a single that you can't? Uh, and are these things you can work on while you're while you're with a spouse as well? Of course. I mean, okay. When I say work on myself, you know, um, like exact, especially if you're single and waiting, which is the theme, right? I don't want to get ahead of you, and I don't want to be, I don't want to burn up in the seat. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> No, when I say work on myself, you know, you work on um, just your own uh, character, your attitude, uh, work on, you know, preparing yourself to, to have somebody come into that space. Um, you know, some of us want to work on our appearance where, you know, you figure, you know what, I want to lose a few pounds. And these things you could do being in a relationship as well. Uh, you know what I mean? But so those are some of the things I'm talking about. And then also, especially a woman that's in ministry, you know, some today say we have to be careful because, you know, once you get into that space where that other person gets into your space, you got to know how to structure everything. You got to know how to divide your time. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say? So all of that comes into play. So you want to prepare yourself for all of that. And mentally too, uh, you know, you want to prepare yourself for somebody who's going to be um, when I say not solely depending on you, but you understand, you have to be there for that person as much as that person is there for you. Uh, you know what I mean? So, and that's why it's so important that when we give somebody that ourselves, that we know that this is the person that we really want to spend uh, the rest of our lives with, because then the two of us are going to be one. Uh, you know what I mean? So you want to prepare yourself for that. Um, you know what I'm saying? So all of that. And then do I want to share my pillows? Do I want to share my bed? You know, trying to say I'm preparing myself. Okay, Vivi, you know what? Uh, just pretend that, you know, you're going to have to share. You're not going to be able to roll over as you feel like. You know, I'm just all of that jokingly. But no, just prepare everything about yourself. Make sure that you're whole and you're ready for this transition from singleness. And, and from singleness to dating, nobody, you don't want to go from single to married. You want to go single to dating or to courting and then you get on, get on and and then see what happens. You use the word I want to talk about whole. How does one prepare to be whole? I believe one prepares, especially a lot of us women. I mean, a lot of us are coming out of uh, other relationships, right? So especially if you're coming out of a toxic relationship, you want to make sure that you're healed from that, that that toxic is gone away. You understand? Because if you don't deal with that, if, what, even if it was a good relationship, but you know what? It just didn't work out. You guys decide to go your ways. You want to get over that because what happens to a lot of us when we get into the other relationship, we start comparing uh, that new person with the old person. We want... Um, the old person uh, to do what the new person to do. You understand? And I'm going to give you a joke, you know? Um, and I don't want to give away anything from my personal interview, but uh, I'll just say, you know, this one guy said to me, listen, I am not like, I'm different. A foot women bond with different from because sometimes we expect them to do the flowers and that's not them. So you know what I mean? So you got to know and you got to make sure that you deal with all those issues. So when you go into this relationship, it's a clean white sheet. You understand what I'm trying to say? And we got to, and, and, and I'm going to say this, and it's real talk. It even comes with, you know, your sex. You understand what I'm trying to say? You know. Hey, Christian Bauer. Hey. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. It's real talk because, you know, that other boyfriend, when you were with him, you understand what I'm saying? We're talking to the unsaved and we're talking to uh, many of us who weren't, we weren't born Christians. You understand? So before you, you know, you're dating this guy, he had sex that way. This guy doesn't do it that way. And then you start, you know, complaining. Hey. <laughs> oh, you got to make sure. So all of that comes into play. Uh, I need to stop talking though. <laughs> over here sweating <laughs> okay all right <laughs> oh geez that was, that's what we, um jacqueline jones which is my wonderful aunt said big warm towel does the job well <laughs> okay now uh, you said so many things i'm not even sure which one to jump on but i want to say that um i like what you're saying i like what you're saying and um we, I, I, I feel like if I, if I say what I want to say, I'm going to jump into something, I want to I'll jump into something, going to touch on something I want to, I want to talk about later on. So let me try and be careful with my words. Um, okay, you know what, let me ask you. 
how do we deal with those things? The expectations. Oh, before you go there, let me uh, one thing on Southern. You said, "What well, the man doesn't buy flowers, flowers, and that's not his thing." I I wanted to just jump on that. You have to remember though, because I know as women, if we know the man don't like red, we're not not buying him red. So when we keep on using this expert justification, oh, if he doesn't buy you flower, it, it, but he's not buy, but he's not dating himself. He is not dating himself. He should be looking into what you like. So if him not like flowers, it's his theme business. Then you him not get the flowers. But if you like flowers, so explain what you said to me. Um, if you don't, is this because okay? Are you just saying that we have the expectation where we should speak about the expectation, or exactly. we should? Okay. No, you can speak into it. Yeah, you can speak into it. Because, so for example, like um, as you said rightfully so, he's not a flowers guy, right? But if you like the flowers and he cares enough about you, he cares about the relationship, he's building on it. Hey, you know what? I don't like it, but my baby likes it. I'm gonna get her the flowers. You know what I'm trying to say? Oh, so yes. that, that speaks of meeting halfway. That speak of selflessness. You understand what I'm trying to say? Uh, so again, you want to be able to, you know, um. And again, it goes back to the love language. You understand? I'm saying we got to know the love language of the person that we're looking to date. And you got to know all of this in your singleness. You know, so you don't wait till you're in the thing. You're trying to understand the love language. What love language are you looking for? What are your expectations? What are your standards? Because in your singleness, this is where you're preparing yourself because you're not going to settle for anything beneath your standard. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say? Or settle for anything less and then you know, because they said you can only be disappointed when your expectations are not met, right? So, yeah. All right. Well, Pastor Nash, this is this is very awkward for me because usually you're the one talking and asking the question. So I'm gonna let you. If you have any questions for me, you go ahead at this time because. Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you for releasing me. Oh my God, I almost got myself in trouble. No, um, Tamika, and then you know we're gonna throw it out. Let me know. All right. You understand? What was the hardest? Be what's 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 two. Are the hardest thing uh, you've had to deal with being single? Um, I, well, it's not it's, okay. So being single at this moment actually is not really hard for me. I think I think what makes it hard is the pe other people's expectations of you. They every time they see you, they, they're like, "Why are you not married? Why are you not this?" Oh, look, a pretty girl like you really. So it's, it's pretty much pretty much the only grounds that I have for being in a relationship. Because we've never communicated about what I'm looking for, why I'm single. But when when they see you, they have this expectation. So it's really people and their 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 expectations, their judgments, their comments, their off you. That for me, that's it's, that's not a personal thing that's hard for me. It's just that that makes it um, from the outside that's hard. But for me, um, you know, okay. So something that might be a little hard. Once in a while, you want to go out. You want to go out. I sometimes I want to go to the movie. I want to go have dinner. I want I, I want to go get ice cream with somebody, not not by myself all the time. You know what I mean? So other than that, other than that, I'm I'm doing okay because I've always been with somebody. I've always been tangled up, um, and so I'm enjoying this time alone. I am enjoying this time alone because usually when I get myself involved with someone, I'm always very committed to them and their vision. Always busy, 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 doing whatever they need, making sure I tend to them in the morning, in the evening, in the night, whatever it is that they need, be on the road with them, supporting them. And so I'm enjoying myself at this time because now I can get ministry going. You think I, you know, I can get up earlier morning, but we have to play music Monday, some Monday when I want to hear nothing about music. You know what I mean? Or get up early in the morning when I want to pray and do certain things. Um, it's just, it's, it, but then again, that also goes down to what kind of man do I want, right? Or what kind of man do I need in my life is going to be able to um to accept that. So I'm enjoying myself because I know if I had a man now, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be able to do the things that I'm doing. Even like you think I could be on here Monday night? Probably it might be a, every night to get up on Facebook Live. <laughs> That's what I mean on panels and all these things. And I'm enjoying this because it's utilizing my skills and my talents, things that I've buried and sat on for a very long time. So I'm enjoying my time right now, being able to um, work on myself, do my courses, um, indulge in ministry, and take the things that I need to take care of, because there are things that I need to take care of also. And it is not about being one being beautiful, why one needs a man. I said to um, the Lord about two years ago, I said to God, do not send me anybody. Do not send me anybody until I learn how to submit myself to you. Because we like to talk about, you know, the same people who are asking you why you have no man. If you pick up a man and you're not respectful to him and you don't treat him a certain way, they're going to be the same one to come down on you. So I decided I had some relationships where some, sorry, say something. No, no, go ahead. I'll, I'll say what I'm going to say after. I'll try to remember. 
I've had some relationships where um, I wasn't very kind. I wasn't very loving. I didn't speak very well. You know what I mean? But also I didn't really respect them and I wasn't in love with them. You know what I mean? So I got to a place where I said to the Lord, don't send me anybody until I'm committed to you. And I was in relationships where um, um, we're both godly people um, in church and it, it, I've, I've put them first. God was not first in my life anymore. So I, I, until I know how to put God first, no, whether it you know, doesn't matter who it is, whether it's a, a man or the man is a pastor or whatever it is, I wish that God is still first. I'm going to get up and seek God first. I'm going to I'm going to decide that God is important. That I'm not going to decide. Okay, only when my husband's away or when I when um I'm gonna have to hide away, I'll be able to say, you know what, I'm going to go talk to God and I'll be back because we push those things to the side when we're tangled up with somebody. And so. I told the Lord, until I learn how to commit myself to you and put you first, don't send me nobody. You will not send me anybody. And okay, so, I'm, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, you can go ahead, go ahead. I'm going to push back a bit because, you know, I, I want to, it's real talk and we're talking about single and waiting and, and our audience, um, you know, are not all believers and are not all saved. We have some single women out there that are not saved. But I'm going to push back, you know, beyond, before your saved years. You understand? How did you deal with being single? Like, were you ever single? Did you feel like you, oh, you had to have a man? Uh, you know, okay. you couldn't keep yourself quiet. Like, yeah, let's like, because, you know, it's one thing. You're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because the thing about it is, it's good. That's why a lot of, and this is very important why I ask this question. Uh, because a lot of people will see us and think, you know what? It was, we always handled ourselves well. We always said, you know, God, keep me. And I don't want that person. But what was it like before the salvation? You know, encourage somebody that, you know what? I used to be like this, but guess what? when I got to know the Lord because that brings us into the redemption part of it you know yeah, uh, yeah. some women out there that they don't like to be they can't do it out a man if they you know and that's just them you understand at that time when they were single uh you know what I'm trying to say and we can get into a whole lot of things so I want to I want to push back on that but before I go there one of the things that you said is so key about expectation and the church needs to stop this i believe sometimes the church people in church put pressure on single christian women when y'all get married well you know i'm trying to say they pressure you you know um you know, i remember listen i remember one day this this evangelist call no name blair no blame years years ago my early christian life we were doing an event and this is a true story. And there was a young man, you know, very handsome young man. Uh, he was one of the speakers, right? And I know this young man. He told me that, you know, he's expected to get married and all of that stuff. And all of that stuff, you know, he has a girlfriend and all that. This evangelist uh, didn't know that. She started prophesying upon me. I, you know, yes, I, you guys, and she started telling me, say, that I'm always one, I'm just, and then I said to myself, you see, just the fact that you're single and you're a minister, it doesn't mean that you're going to marry another minister. And a lot of people put that pressure on us. You understand? Because you're a preacher, because you're a minister, because you're in front line, you have to marry a pastor, you have to marry a, and it's not necessarily so, don't pressure us. You understand? Don't expect, you understand? That's to be the person that you're going to see us with. And, you know, I don't like that. To be honest, I don't like it. Because, you know, again, it comes, as you said, the expectation. Uh, because you're a woman of God. Uh, you need to be married a man that's a prophet. And he has to be. Because you could be First Lady Vivian. Yeah? First Lady. That what does that even mean? mean? Just when they had wives before. What does that mean? This first lady thing. Listen, the first lady, that means you're, there's a second, third, fourth. You understand what I'm trying to say? So we need to get rid of this first lady. You understand? We And that's a whole other show. But anyway, you're right. Don't pressure. Don't put pressure on us or pressure on those people. Okay, back to before you guys. I will answer your question about the free the free Christ. And then I'll, um, I want to yeah. jump on the expectation. Yes. Yes, when I, I remember I was um I was engaged to someone two years ago and how much years ago? It's too fast. This lady said to me, um, well you just why don't you just hurry up and get married so you can have kids. And I made a statement and um, you know, this this, this kids argument kept coming up. Now at the time, um, I'm gonna mention this because um, I'm not sure how people need to leave people alone and start people's business. So these people obviously they believe they're doing you know, whether it's family or friends. They think they're they're, they're saying a good thing. Um, I made a comment about uh, something about no kids, and they jumped up on me about you have to give on kids and all type of talking. 
they weren't aware that the, the man I was with wasn't able to have children. So there they are cussing me. They don't know mm -hmm. what, 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 what the situation is, yet cussing me in front of this person, how I have to this and I have to that, right? So we, I think we just, um, people just keep people alone. You leave people alone, come up people's business, because um, you don't know it. So if somebody says they don't want something, who are you to tell to tell them what they should be having or going? You, you know what I mean? It's just it's just people need to learn to leave, um to mind their business. The Bible talks about meddling, and people need to stop meddling in people's business and mind their own. True. I just want right. to. Um, I just want to greet up. Auntie, I'm not even looking at your comment over there. I just want to say welcome. I think um, Pastor Cedric Brown is in the room. I want to welcome you. I want to welcome each and every one of you who are joining us and those of you who are on our YouTube channel. I'm getting used to say that uh, Real Talk YouTube channel. Uh, welcome tonight. It is Real Talk. My name is Vivian uh, with my co-host uh, Tamika. She's uh, at the forefront. I'm in the passenger seat tonight. Uh, yes. So again, uh, we're talking about a single and waiting. Uh, are you satisfied in your singleness? Are you miserable in your singleness? What are you doing? Uh, you know, during the time that you're single, are you preparing yourself? Uh, you know, are you getting yourself ready, or you're just, you know, doing your own thing and and you know, not you're not thinking about it. Uh, so that's what we're talking about tonight. We will open the lines. Uh, we do have a giveaway uh, as we continue. We're gonna have a little surprise guest uh, that will come in um, probably a little bit later. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's always good to hear from the male. Because you know what I says, oh, it's just ladies you're talking about. Yeah, we need to hear from the men. All right. So uh, yeah, Tamika. So you know, back in those days, how did go ahead, go ahead, finish. <laughs> Your question was, did I was I always content being single? Yeah, I didn't think being single um, was really an option. But then again, um, the men I was talking to, I wasn't trying to be in a relationship with them. You know, I was very heavily into the dance all. So, um, going to dance, I was going to school. Testify, um, testify, popcorn testify. <laughs> yeah, and so it's just a thing to always just have a man. You know what I mean? Whether it's a party man, the, the dinner man, the shopping man, the hair man, it, just, it was just a thing to just have, you know what I mean? And what I, what I look like, I think not one of them made one, as, as, as Jamaican parents would say, not one of them made one. And that's what I mean, because I'm thinking, why do I have all these different men? Now, we're not talking about sleeping with these men. We're talking about having them, okay? So these different men now, I was thinking, I was, but back then it was okay because I wasn't in love with them. And they all, they, I think they knew that they didn't want anything to do with me either. Some were married. So obviously the married one, them, they'll take you out, but they have to reach back home. The guy who, you know, you're not really attracted to him, but he's like, that's the friend, the friend one. He's very, you guys talk very good, but you know, you don't really want to be with him. The one we love, just love to dash your money upon you because this is what he does, but he's doing it to every to every girl. So you don't really feel special. So at that time, I didn't know anything about, I guess I was, but if we're honest, I was still single. Although I was interacting with all these men, I was still truly single. But to me, I was taken. I mean, whichever, whichever weekend or, or night I was out with whoever I was taken. But um, in myself, I I was I can really say at this time I was I was truly single because I wasn't taken by anyone I wasn't owned by any of them and the one that wanted to own me I didn't like you know they're the one that didn't seem hot and a hot boy you know um not dainty you know <laughs> the one would talk nice and you know the one where I go go, go places but you don't know that you know what I mean so time and with experience and age teaches us some things you know what I mean so and that's um, go ahead yeah. I want I want Lord help me tonight. I don't know why you chose this topic. She chose it, guys. But you're too much because you're not saying anything. I know no, you want me to say everything. No, I'm going to tell you something. You talked about the club and going to the club. As single women, be careful when you go. And those of you, you know, you have not come to the Lord yet. You understand? You're still going out there. You know, we're praying that one day, you know, you'll surrender. We know it's a process. But be careful when you go into the clubs, you know, and, and you're as a single woman and a guy tries to, as you know, Tamika used to go to the dance and a guy liked it because I had a horrible experience. I had a horrible experience in my single days going to the club. Uh, you understand, know, as you said, rightfully so. You know, I went into the club, my friends were there. And again, you're single, so you know what? You walk in and you, you know, you just want to have fun. You're looking around and say, so you know what? Um, you know, back then, you know, you have your job, you have your money, you have your car, so nobody's attached to you. And I remember we were in this club and this guy, you know, uh, came over to me and he's like, you know, you have a boyfriend. I said, no, I don't. And, you know, look like an interview on the floor, like, excuse me, guy. But listen, anyways, he looked good. 
you understand, dressed nice. And I remember he had on like a Gilligan's, uh, Jesus help me tonight, God. Uh, yeah, he had on like a, you know, the Gilligan's hat, like, you know, come over his face and everything, but cool and nice and whatever, you know, very respectful and all of that. And, you know, we're there hanging out by my friend and drinks and stuff like that. Anyways, he said, oh, you know, can I give you my number? Sure. I, you know, I'm visiting from Montreal. So then I got like, good, Montreal. That means that I don't have to have no, I don't know man. You understand what I'm trying to say? I don't have to worry about nobody coming and say, yes, you, whatever. So anyways, got his number. Again, remember the club dark. You understand what I'm trying to say? Pitch black. It doesn't look alike. Dark. <laughs> anyways, Sunday morning came. And I said, you know what? Let me call my friend and pick her up and let's go check this guy. He's visiting from Montreal. You know, maybe drive him around another place. Let me tell you something, ladies. Oh, well, I got myself nice and everything, put myself together. My car clean and nice now, you know, and everything and went to pick up this guy now. Anyways, I called him. I said, you know what? I'm downstairs. He told me where he was staying and me and my friend was there. Let me tell you something. When I saw that guy, Tanika, I, if the earth could have opened up and take me in there, I would rather go into the hole. <laughs> Listen to me. The look, oh my God, I was so frightened. I couldn't press gas. I couldn't do nothing. Yes. I'm talking about single and just wait your turn. When you're single, don't pick up nothing in the dark. So you know if you go somewhere now and so, you don't know. Hold on a second. So, anyways, so now I'm in the car, he's at the door. I can't just drive. <laughs> I can't just drive. I could just drive up. Um, hey, what's up? Uh, <laughs> so you know what I did? I went only as far as Albion Mall. Call somebody for call me and tell me there's an emergency. Hey guy, I got to go. Trust me. So I'm just saying this as single women, as she brought up the club, as single women, you know, when you go to club, just enjoy yourself. Don't try to talk to nobody unless you can't see them face because you might just be disappointed the next day. So when you're single, mm -hmm. just want to enjoy yourself. No, it's a real story. You know what I'm saying? But you know something, it's so sad though, because this guy, the two minutes of Miss Penna as the amount. He bought me this really nice teddy bear and the teddy bear I'm on one hot when I see him get it done. <laughs> <laughs> no, but guess what though? This goes back to what you're saying. I love teddy bears, right? And during our conversation, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know why I mentioned teddy bears, but he bought me a teddy bear. You know, because I, because I, the one we know a life bio yeah. bio where life. You know, so I have the teddy bear right now. I'm gonna show them before the show. The one next one. We yeah. call that clutter. <laughs> so I'm just saying that, you know, as single women, you know, when you go out, just go to enjoy yourself, be careful, uh, you know, who you meet in the night. Um, go ahead, Tamika. Pastor Dama says you're killing him. And uh, Jacqueline Jones says time to go for gas. Pastor <laughs> Dama, make your way over to the to the Zoom if you can, please, please. <laughs> All right. Listen, um, I couldn't press on the gas. Trust me, the way I'm coming to the car so quick. No, yes, she said it's time for you to go get gas. Come see, I'll get some gas and come back. <laughs> oh, geez. That's what I'm saying. He was right at the door. Like, <laughs> okay. I tried to do it other way route. Uh, yeah, I tell you, when you're, and that's the thing too, when you're single and, you know, you're having fun with your singleness, you know what I'm saying? You'll see guys and, you know, I have some scary stories too, you understand, <laughs> with being single and person trying to pick you up. I remember I was working for Warner Brothers and I had to go to New York. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? And I'm just talking, since she asked a question about single and waiting, you're waiting, but you know, you're still kind of looking, you're not safe. And I was dealing with this customer in New York, you understand what I'm trying to say? And you know, I was going to New York, so he says, hey, let's meet up at the train, you know, at the, the train station. So I said, fine, you understand, you know, I was going to be there for the weekend. And, um, you know, so, I mean, he sent me a picture of himself. I sent him a picture of myself. And let me tell you something, it was fine and everything, listen. When I got to New York, 
And I was there waiting. So I called him. I said, listen, I'm here, you know, whatever. I'm standing at this point. He goes, okay, wait right there. I'm coming. So I kind of walked off a little bit. So he went to where I was standing and I wasn't there. So he started walking around. So I went back there. This So this man said to me, oh, this guy was looking for you because uh, he asked me. So I said, oh, yeah, he will stay right here. Let me tell you something. This guy sent a picture to me. I don't know if he was standing on a crate or carton box because he looked tall. Everybody who knows me, I'm short. Tamika, I stood beside this white man and the white man says, hey, there's the guy coming, Tamika. The guy is shorter than me. <laughs> and let alone, he came up to me, he might have no front teeth. <laughs> I'm not joking, I'm not joking, but I'm telling you, so I'm just saying, like, it's no, I'm, this is, listen, if I had my good girlfriend on here, she'll tell you, it is so true. Every time I remember that, I die laughing. So again, you know, you're single, and you know, you know, at that time I was in a company that I traveled a lot and you meet a lot of people that, you know, the same feel as me. So you decide, hey, you know what? Uh, they're co-partners, you know, Warner Brothers is all over, right? Warner Brothers, New York. So I said, you know what? He's like a colleague, you know, but trust me, I am short. He was shorter than me and he never had any front, two of his front teeth was missing. Oh my. So, you know, I said, I don't want to go to hell, but that day, uh, God, I would opt to go there for just half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you have many more stories oh, to share. So much stories, but you know what? I thank God that he has redeemed me. I am saved and delivered and spoken for right now. Uh, yes. If I make sure I said that to you, so just in case. <laughs> You're killing me. Good evening. You're killing me. <laughs> and we have our surprise guest. Drum roll. Bum 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 bum. <laughs> the, the handsome. Um. Down no the handsome. No you know. That. You know about that already. That's how it goes. It's proper. That's it. So good evening. Good evening, guest. Good evening, audience. Good evening, everybody. Let's welcome uh, Pastor Delma down there from Florida. Yes, our surprise guest, uh, indeed. Um, yeah, Delma, talk to me. Oh, 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 your money just single life. Trust me, you look like you was a girl, man. Now you get enough trouble, enough broke enough heart. <laughs> That's so good. But let me get this straight to you. Um, let me say it to you. Um, when I was out there, it was a little bit different from close now, the door. Close the yeah, door. Yeah, hold on. No, I'll do that. No, you I'll know that. you're working, so we'll give you a, a little time to set up your cell. Okay, so as I say, when me unsave, it's different from now that we save, you know. You know, when I was unsave, you were talking about meeting people in the dance hall and in the, you know, different places. You know, I used to do that too. And when I go back to the morning, I said, no, sir. Mm -mm. I remember I went to a party in Spanish town. I meet a young lady there, have some good time with her at the night and the drop her home and the morning, I go back and look for her. And I call her and she come and she push her head through the window and tell me I come. I say, Me soon come. I say, What? I don't see that. I say, I don't know auntie. She said, Me soon come. And when I see she come through the door, I said, What? Well, you don't know me, I mean, you I just drive. I don't ask the question. I just press gas. <laughs> so, it's not nice. <laughs> no, 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 no. But we are talking about single, like, no, 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 no. And then that we are step up. When I really care about nothing, I'm time there. But looking back. <laughs> So God have mercy, God have mercy upon us, God have mercy, God have mercy it's, it's, upon us. Hold on, hold on, Pastor. Again, welcome to Real Talk. I'm your host, Vivian with Tamika. We're talking about single and waiting. We are going somewhere with this. Uh, but as you said, Real Talk, our motto is keeping the discussions real. We don't want to come to you as if we have arrived and we're always like this, you know, everything was perfect. We did some things and yet in our singleness, you know, we kind of looked and some things happened to us and all that stuff. Uh, we are real people. Uh, you understand what I'm trying to say? And we want to encourage uh, somebody who might be doing what we 
we were doing to know, listen, God can transform you. He can deliver you. He can bring you to a place where you enjoy yourself. He can bring you to a place where you don't need a man uh, to feel comfortable in your bed. Uh, you don't need to get, you know what I'm trying to say? So we want to be free. Yes, and so I really need to say that because I don't, I, the critics are out there, you know, and, and, and all that stuff. So I, I want to open it wide uh, who we are. You need to visit our mission statement and our vision statement. So we're being real. And that is a downfall with the church. We don't, we don't act real. We let people think that we've always been saved. We're always been speaking in tongues. We never had sex. We're a virgin and all of that. Hey. And as I'm trying to say, we need to be real in our singleness. We did some stuff that we're not proud of, but God redeemed us. You understand? And delivered us from it. And that's why this is what this generation wants to hear. They want to hear real story, real people that was going through real issues that God delivered them from. So that's why we're talking the way we are talking. We're going to go somewhere. We don't want to be so religious that we're no earthly good. We can't reach anybody. Uh, you understand what I'm going to say? I would like to tell somebody, you know what? Um, I met this short, no teeth guy when I was single. So you know what? I decided, you know what? I'm going to wait on God. You understand? I met a Gilligan's Island and I had to run away from him. But I thank God that I wait. Like it's really. Real issue, real people, real talk as the nose on your face. So I just really had to say that. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, welcome to everyone um, that's joining us near and far. And for those who'd watch on the replay, uh, again, our topic tonight is single and waiting. Are you satisfied uh, in your singleness? We're going to go there. Tamika, I need to roll the show back to you because I'm in the drive, I'm in the passenger seat tonight. Uh, yeah, but I just had to say that as the host. All right. So, Pastor Delmo, you told, you told us at one time you were a stepper. Yes, yes, yes. For me, out there, me that step. You're not real art. Well, what, real are you, us, what are you now? What are you now? Well, you know, um, I am now a child of God. You know, hey. and I, I'm, I've learned that, you know, I have to wait upon the Lord. You know, the Bible said, either wait upon the Lord, you know, will renew your strength. You know, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not proud of what happened then. But I can tell somebody that what happened then I'm not proud, proud of it. You don't have to fall in the same trap that I have been. Exactly. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. You know, I have been I've been through some some serious relationships where I just play me up and have fun. Just because I'm a singleness, you know. Mm. Just have fun because I'm a singleness. And uh, in that process, it's sad to say, but you were not ready to settle down. So it's just having fun. So now, so back then when you were single and playing around. Do you so do you have the same mentality now? Like if you're not if you're single, if you're if you're if you were to date or how do you go about dating? Do you date and are you dating more intentionally or you're dating still kind of playing the field and all those things? Well, I am really not dating yet, but I'm still looking around. Um, what I learned to do though is after being through a relationship and you know I know I'm single, so. Um, yeah, I have to deal with me first. Single and waiting. <laughs> I have to deal with, have to deal with me Florida. first. Yeah, thank you. I have to take care of me first. You know nice. what I mean? There was there was some things that I need to deal with in me first as a Christian man. Now, the world look at it different. So I have to talk about a Christian first. Yes. Church. Because if I was out in the world and she's gone, move to the next. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Move on to the next. But we can't handle that. As in Christ now. And and what I'm looking for is not is not just sex. Not a happy time. I'm not looking for just a happy time. You know what I mean? If it was when you were in the world, it would be like there's ten in the bed, then one fell off <laughs> all over. I would just ask, I would just ask I would just say next. You know, somebody take our place. But hey, now that I am a Christian oh, man, I am a man of I am a man of God. I'm a child of God. I'm saved. Amen. No, Amen. I have to do it in the right way. And the right way is that I'm not looking for fun. I'm not looking for sex. Good. Not sex I'm looking for right now. You know, if I, you know, people fall into relationship for different reasons. You know, some people just want to have sex. Some people tell them bed, them bed, cool, and they want someone at the bed. Some people say they can't live alone because they have to have sex. So I'm looking for what I'm looking for. I'm waiting that person who I can have a relationship with. <laughs> and I know exactly what I'm looking for. Talk up, Delma, talk up. People them know what I look for. <laughs> yes, man. Everybody have to know what they want, you know. You know what I mean? And then after you have, I mean, relationship that doesn't work and you're single, you want to make sure that you're doing the things the right during this time. And so I examine myself. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. You finish up. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. 
so I examine myself and know, you know, what is wrong, what I need to do, what did I do wrong, or what went wrong. Um, I don't point fingers at all times. I try to flush out myself too and say, Delma, you know, you could have fixed so and so, you could have done better so and so. And because I cannot go into our next relationship with all of this baggage with me and this earth and, hey. you know, and, and not letting go of a one and still going in with something and I still hold on to, can't trust nobody because, you know, when I come out of a relationship, it's hard to trust the next person. And stick, come along. A, stick a pin there. And I, that is so important. I like what you said there on a serious note. Uh, when you come out of one thing, when you're single, especially when it's a trust factor, you got to learn to trust again because then you will enter into another relationship with that same issue. You're not going to trust that person. And the least little thing that looks like what the other person that you don't trust does, you're going to figure that, hey, I can't trust. So you go into this with all these walls, fourth knocks. You understand? So you can't receive the true genuineness of that person uh, so that's important again these are some of the things that we need to deal with in our singleness and it also goes about of being whole you understand being whole and ready to be joined uh to somebody or to really get into into with somebody so pastor dama you know women always talk about all oh, taking care of themselves they need to be this need to be whole and all these things so do you feel that in your singleness that it, 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 and you did mention that it's important that a man looks at himself he takes care of himself he does things for himself he he prepares himself for that woman or if you can just come out i want to just move into our next one um yeah because men men are more they say more resilient men can just move on quicker or you think they should they need to take time to heal and deal with certain things i know you touched on that uh, some of that a while ago but i want to talk about it a little bit more do you think um there should really be a wait in time don't just jump from from okay mary gone last month i'm say susie ne next month or you think there should be a waiting period Yes. Um, let me put it this way. For example, if you hurt yourself, get a cut, it takes time for it to heal. You have to nurture that and doctor that stuff and, you know, wait on it to heal properly before you can use that arm again if the arm. You understand? So it's just like a relationship. When you come out of a relationship, somebody gets hurt. You know what I mean? And you are, most of the time, two parties leave the earth because we love each other and something happened and two of us hurt. So therefore, you have to learn to deal with that, clear up that, because if you don't take care of that for your personal life, you cannot move on and be happy. Because guess what? You're going to always believe that it's going to happen in the next relationship. So you have to clear that mind, free yourself. And let me say this to you uh, before we move forward. Um, in the real life, loneliness will kick in sometimes. I want you to do things. I want you to go and find somebody because you're lonely. If it's a man like me who never live without a woman all of your life, always have a woman, always have a wife, always have a woman beside you, and you get lonely, you get, you get single, you get, loneliness will play on your mind that, oh, I have to find somebody now. And you to, yeah, they never try to trick me too. No? Go find somebody now, tell me you can't live alone, you're lonely. So uh, in real life, loneliness will play a factor if you're a man who always have a woman around. And if you're a person also who think of a relationship which is... um. Um, beneficial to each other in terms of just, I was thinking just now if I should text it tomorrow morning, I don't have a daughter, a wife, who may I call because I'm turn around. These are some responsibilities we look at too. Factors. So some man get married because they want to have somebody around them just in case anything happens. Different factors. But yes, the question you ask is, the question you ask again is, man must learn to do something. Man can't want the woman to do everything. You don't forget the woman then. If you can't wash, cook and clean, you need a woman. Talk up, Pastor Delma. Talk up. Wait just a minute right here. Talk up. Me say, if a man can't wash, cook, and clean, he needs to go back and learn them things because you have a woman and you turn her and maid. And the relationship all goes sour. So I believe just like how me want a woman can cook, wash, and clean. The woman want the same thing a man who can, even though they have different standards. But I believe that all men must be able to help out in the house, help their family in the house. Okay, so all I'm gonna, men. I'm going to ask you a question, Delma a man of God you are, right? And the Bible says that he that findeth a wife find a good thing. You're single, right? Mm -hmm. So basically the reason why you're still single is because you're, you're working on you, your God is dealing with you. Uh, is that why you're single? So there's, you don't see anybody in the horizon, like you're totally just dedicated to ministry. Uh, you know, that's you just, just dealing with you. And how, I mean, how are you handling it? How do you handle those lonely nights? I understand. I mean, As a man, you're I'm, human. 
Like, you understand? Yes. Me? How do you manage? Yes. You know, do you, yeah. What, whatever time I speak of a situation, I'm speaking directly about me right now. Right. Sometimes loneliness play out, plays out. Right. And so when, it no, plays out, uh, when it plays out for Pastor Francis, when loneliness hits you and knocks at your door and you open it and it comes in. I think Sanchez sang a song. Lonely, lonely, lonely. Lonely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're supposed to know that song, Velma, that Sanchez sang. Yes, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> so when, when that happens, what does Pastor Francis do? I want you to talk, like, because there's somebody else out but, there that's in ministry. There's a young pastor that's single. You understand? How would you encourage that pastor when lonely won't leave you alone? When that happened, when it happened, a song, a next song kicking on my head. Come over here, let me take off your clothes. But anyhow, just kidding. <laughs> but but um, when that happened, I have to control myself because I feel like I kept my phone and say, you know, I need a wife now. I gotta find somebody. And sometimes it really get to the point where I never live. I said I never live with other woman before. I never live with other woman. Okay. I live with a woman from I'm 19 years old. I live with somebody. You know what I mean? So I never sleep, go to my bed and put out a woman unless she go on a trip and come back. And so it's very difficult. So what I have to do sometimes, sometimes what I have to do is set my phone up, trust me, and call my daughter, or call somebody to occupy my time because my mind will be running wild. And that's why I like Jake, Jason Mighty song. He said, hold me, Lord, try control me. Never let me go. And the words of that song is so strong. So, and represent me. So when I want to go clubbing, smoking, hanging with my friend, God put a hole on me. Because really, if God don't put a hole on me sometimes, as a young man, as a Christian man, your mind wild sometimes. Because you want, you want a companion. You miss your companion. But as a Christian, we cannot go out there and pick up a woman and carry her in bed. There are certain principles and standards that we live by. But the devil play with our mind. We have thoughts too. Yeah, enough time to call Tamika. Tamika, what happened? Come over now. <laughs> so, so, you know what I mean? And it not really means that no one. No, hold on. We're joking. The job in the States. I'm in Canada. So that's like a little joke. So nobody knows. You know, I'm well, no well, well, funny. Well, 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 no, no. I'm, you. I'm just <laughs> dropping. I'm just dropping something here. Just saying this. Sometimes that's how it never works. Call somebody and say, hey, come over now. But I have to understand myself who I am. At. You know, I am a vessel. Belongs to God. So the flesh man, the flesh man wants to step out. Because him need him lonely. But what I do, and I tell you something, we're not all righteous, we're not all, all well, I say, oh, God, fix it for me. Sometimes I have to look on the flesh and speak to the flesh and say, be yourself, boy. Be yourself, Belma. You know what I mean? Remember who you are. And what kept me most of the time is remembering who I am. Remember my vows that I take. You know, the vows that I take to the Lord. Sometimes that's what keeps me. Believe me, when I remember that vows are up on me, oh, Lord, that's what keeps me sometimes. I don't care how spiritual you are. Here comes a time when the devil, the flesh will play around with you. When you're single. So you have to just know yourself and get some self-control and know what you want. Because if you don't want sex like me, then you will wait. You will try to wait until you find that right person. But Pastor it's Delmar, not easy. Hmm? Go ahead. When you're lonely time, you don't, you don't just feel like, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, they, some people call it test drive. Do you believe in test driving even as you're courting? <laughs> you <a> driver? <laughs> no test driver around here. No why, test why, why here. no test drive? Because people just don't want to put it in a bug. So why you don't want to test drive? Me, me like pushing in a bug. I mean, like, let me go on, man. I'm just walking in the bug. Anyway. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's a notion that we have been hearing from. What we can fill up from long before we born that said that, oh, we now my time and I mean, we're not, we're not, we're not. but you know, I trust God enough to hey, give me. He said, if you, ask, if you ask him for bread or for fish, he will not give you a stone. So I trust God enough that he will give me a wife that will satisfy me. Amen. And then Amen. I am looking at my eyes because sometimes I look, I look and I size them up with my eyes and I say, oh, you know, mm, you know, mm, you know. As other man, you know, most men look for the woman and say, well, yeah, you know, yeah, mm, yeah. I'm out, look all right, uh, you know, they say, look all right. You know what I mean? And and and, and we, we tend to, as men, we have experience with other women, so we know what we're looking for. You know what I mean? And um, 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, test drive business about Christian. We can't handle that. We don't believe in that. We believe yes, in the Bible. The Bible says, Bible says, sex before marriage a sin. Yes. And I, we're not gonna we're not gonna say I, I, I got and jump off and then got up and kill myself. Cause we're not that a sin. You understand? So me not believe in a test drive. Me like by person about because me anxious to go home, go home at that night. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, yes. Jack yeah. Jones says no test drive. Wait for the surprise. Wait for the Definitely. surprise. No sure. test drive. Sure. Yeah, cause me go buy a car and me drive it. Test drive it. Me not, me, me myself. What me like when feel ya, man? But me buy it and carry it home and then me start love it. Me start fix it up on my want to put on spoiler hey. on it and me go love it. So love it. it. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I mean, love it and I buy it. But I test drive and drive here. No, sir, I'm right here. No, sir. So guess what? We as Christians, we cannot believe in that. So single people, single people too. And them are the person now. I don't know what I talk about now. Who say, boy, I mean, no, I'm going to let me test the right person. No test right, people. You're Christian. You have to live by the word of God. I believe 100% in the word of God. And it said sex before marriage is sin. But you will say now, you will say now that marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. So get married. But don't marry for sex. Don't get married because you want to have sex. Very serious. Because many relationships, I have counseled a lot of people who go into marriage for different various reasons. And it don't work. It doesn't work. So if there is a reason for you to marry, I never ask the why you want to marry. Never ask the questions. So single people, open your eyes. Look for your one. There are some signs you'll see from day one. No, say now work. Don't think it about change. So remain single, hold it together. Can't remember, you know, I'm a wife now. So my mother telling me, say, nothing you don't have, nothing you don't look forward for. <laughs> you don't have a home and I look forward for none. So she sure. we up. I mean, I mean, I want to get married. We want to get married, but we have to do the right thing. You. I, and you know what? I'm looking forward to that invitation to fly down to Florida and, um, yeah, to attend your wedding. Yeah, to yes, meet you. Uh, yeah, friend. Yes, yes. Lord. But then, first of all, there's something different. <laughs> like what? Yes, like what? The other audience, like what? You know what? Those are the lad, the lad, the what's, what's, what's different you think the Lord is going to do? Tell us, it's real talk. No, 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 I can't do it. can't say different. I can't me, I come at your wedding. You all come at my wedding? I can't me, I come at your wedding. Oh. <laughs> oh. I know what you want to hear, right? I don't know what I said. Tamika, that makes me up. Tamika, now what I mix up, man. <laughs> this is Pastor Francis, Pastor Delmer Francis. He uh, is a new member of the Real Talk panel. You're going to hear him. We have a special, uh, and I want to plug it in right now. We have Real Talk ed special edition uh, with Pastor Francis on Thursday. Uh, so you want to join us Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Real Talk uh, special edition with Pastor Francis. He's going to be uh, sharing a little about himself, sharing a little word of encouragement uh, to our men to our young boys, um, young men. Uh, so you don't want to miss it. Uh, yes, and even speaking to our women as well. Uh, so Real Talk, uh, special edition this Thursday at 7.30 p.m. with no other than um, Pastor Francis out of Orlando, Florida, the man that is single and waiting. Uh, last question. I know you're at work. Um, are you satisfied right now in your singleness? Uh, no. You're not satisfied? Straight up, no. Straight up, no. Mm. I don't want to remain single. I don't want to get used to single life. Okay. I don't want to get... Some people live in a single life. They end up You're honest. What is an honest answer? Yeah. yeah, no, I'm telling the truth. I don't want to be living single and get used to single life. I don't want to get used to it. It is no life. That's why God said it is not good for man to be alone. It's not good. I mean, I work with the Bible. The Bible says so. It says it's not good for man to be alone. I mean, I say all of the single man them. It's not good for you to be alone. You know what I mean? So if you find somebody who you really love and you, you, we are look for, and you talk to God about it and say God sanction it, then go ahead, man, and get married because guess what? It's better to be married than to be burned. All these scriptures did it. But if you know you're not ready for your family, don't take up the people them girl pick me. Let me change the language. If you know you're not ready for a wife, don't take the, the little people them daughter and then you treat her badly. So, men, get yourself together because it is a responsibility. You got to pick up on yourself. 
you know, and if you're not responsible enough, don't go there. Give a few examples you know what of what mean? responsible looks like. Responsible. What should they work well. on before getting involved with someone? If, all right. As a marriage counselor, if I am going to get some two persons who want to get married, I'm asking some very serious questions. Like, I mean, I mean first of all, I'm going to ask them, do you have a job? They ask these questions. Do you have a job? Do you own a house where you live? Do you live with your mother or your father? What's up for the game? What's your plan? You know, marriage is very, is very sacred. And uh, when two becomes one, it means them are one. That's it mean. You know, I mean, them are partner. I mean, them are one. So that means I'm going to ask the question, can you take care of this woman? Because you're fully responsible for her. You understand? Now, you don't have to own a house to get married. And if you have one, it's better. But if you don't have one, it's okay. You can work towards that. But you guys must have goals working towards and know what is it you're getting into this marriage for. As I said, people marry for different reasons. Some of the reasons are someone gets her from somebody, someone shows somebody to think they're married, someone be in a certain class, married people doing it for the wrong reasons. You know what I mean? And, and so it no work. It works for a little bit and then you start having trouble because you went in it for the wrong reason. I am one of those persons who have who have went into who, who get into marriage at the, at, at the last session for the wrong reason. And I said the last session because I didn't know it was going to be like this. I'm looking forward for this to get married again. But I'm waiting. And I'm really what I'm waiting is that I want to make sure this time, this time. This time, when I, said, when I said for better or worse, this time, I want to make sure I find the one where I can spend the rest of my 50 years my earth with. Wow. So that means we can sing this song, I don't mind waiting. Yes. I don't yeah, but mind waiting. I don't 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 mind waiting. No, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. But guess what? I don't mind waiting. I get, I get old. I get oh, old. You have a fitting clock. You have fitting clock. So you know, trust God. No. If you are for the right time, you want to. No, me trust God. God. Me trust God. Me trust God. But remember this: God now come down from giving a wife, and now come on earth from giving. You have to find it. You just find it a wife. You just find it. And when you find, but you have to ask God for direction. Nothing gonna come down and say yes. Um, Tamika, see him there. She there. I am there. No, you have to Sometimes find it. Sometimes it happens that way. Yeah, it, 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 it does, but God now here, you have to find it for yourself. God said, you that find God can't get the word. You that find it a wife, find that good thing, can't get the word. You know I mean, so therefore, therefore, I am waiting until God, you know, until I clean my vessel, get myself together, and go to God with it and say, God, you know, nothing me ready now. But you can tell me, I'm ready. But I'm not going to find none for me. I said, God, I'm ready now, no. Just find me in the right direction. Amen. You know, As because, I said, I'm looking forward to attending your wedding and to meeting that beautiful bride, whether she's in Canada, uh, the UK, wherever she's around the world, I will make myself available. Yep, yep, yep. Glass, 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 glass. All right. Soon, so soon, again, soon, just, soon, soon. Good stuff. So again, I just want to do a little uh, commercial break here. Welcome to each and every one of you that is joining us uh, behind the scenes. Those of you who are joining us, uh, international viewers. Uh, those of you who are joining us uh, through our YouTube channel. Uh, good night. Welcome to Health Watch. I'm the host Vivian with my co-host Tamika, and we are discussing single and waiting. Are you satisfied? Are we going to go ahead and open the the lines now? You're in control. I'm turning over back to you. Go ahead. I'm having sure, we can open the lines. We can open the lines up. You want to uh, pin your are number? Are you doing it after? Your... Are you do, uh, no, no, do what you're doing because I can't remember if you're doing it after your yes, set. Yes, in. well, time is go. I don't know. I don't know if we should do that next, but um, you know what? Let's um, let's you're let's, let's you want to get the number out while we work on that. Uh, yes, all right. A few months ago, you guys, we did we spoke about the seven areas of life. And tonight, we want to revisit those areas because we believe that as singles, Pastor Dumb, I'm sorry, are you staying with us? You have, you can stay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm done work. I'm done work. Yeah. All right. I want, you guys should get a, a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil to get into this activity. But a few months ago, we spoke about the seven areas of life. We're going to revisit um, that activity tonight because even though we were single, whether you're tangled up or you're single, we should have balance in all areas of our lives. And so tonight we spoke about many different things. But the truth is, we want we want to talk to people who are single. We want to talk to those who are in the Lord because we, we believe it's very very important that um those who are waiting on the, those who trust in the Lord have to trust Him even in this area, trust His time and not their time and not their clock, not their clock 
and age, but they want to trust that God knows the right time. Look upon Abraham. We love to talk about Abraham and Sarah, but them did all. Hmm. Old, old, old. Yes, yes. Abraham, what had faith? Although everybody made it work, he had faith. Do you have faith tonight? So I want to ask, what kind of woman are you? What kind of woman are you? There's many different kind of women in the Bible. There's Sarah who, who kind of offered up her husband. Are you like, yes, it's in color that showed the impatient woman. Are you a Jezebel? What about a Delilah? You know, willing to sell out your man. Are you, what kind of man, what kind of woman are you? you know, there's different kinds of women that want to get involved or want to get married. We want to identify what kind of woman are you because not all these characteristics are good for marriage. Yeah, so what about Ruth? Ruth was a, was a, was a, was a wonderful um, young lady, patient and kind and long suffering with her, with her mother-in-law. And she was in the right place at the right time. What about Esther who got to a place who said, if I perish, I perish. Are you sold out for the most high God? That way, no matter what God says or what he does in your life, uh, you're gonna work with him. Whether you perish alone, or you perish with somebody, are you Are you an Esther? What about Mary who said, beat on to me, Lord. No matter what God does in your life, you're gonna work with him. What about the woman who followed her husband and tell lies about the money? Are you, gonna, are you one of those women who are gonna follow your husband and, and tell lies for him and cover up our schemes and don't be a woman? who needs to stand up and, and, and stand up for righteousness and for the right thing. What kind of woman are you? What about the woman in the Proverbs? So it talks about that, 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 that was it, brawling woman who come like a, a, a dripping faucet. So the man wants to go at a corner at a house because she's so annoying. Are you that woman? If you're any of these women that is not good, you need to fix up yourself. You're not ready yet for marriage. You are not ready for marriage. So Pastor, should we be ready for the seven areas? Go ahead. You're in the Praise the Lord. When he's saying Ruth and I'm an Esther, praise God. Praise God. All right. We've got royalty viewing in. All right, so seven areas of life. We're going to, you know, if you have a piece of pen and a paper, we're going to talk about the seven areas and you, we want you to put a score beside them. We're going to put a score beside each area. So what we, what this what this exercise does is look at the areas of life and you get to see if you're balanced. Are you unbalanced? Or are you balanced based on the numbers that you put beside them? So number one is the, your mental, we'll, we'll call it your, the mental area. The mental area of your life. That can include things like um, how, how do you learn? Are you a reader? How do you develop the mind? Personal development, classes, those type of things. How do you... um. How do you facilitate your mind? Is it, do you have a healthy mind? <laughs> do you have positive self-talk? Or is your, is your, is your, is your, is, are your thoughts negative? So on a scale of one to 10, write down what number you believe your, um, your mental health um, is at this time. Next area is business or career. Yes, are you, are you happy where you are today? Are you in that job that you love? Or have you, have you started that business that you should? What is the number? That you are, what is the number for your business slash career or even job? Are you happy at that job? You're gonna you're gonna retire there and die there. You can, it, can, it can be a ten for you. What about number three? Finances. Oh yes, how is your finances? Are you a spender or a saver? You have money or you don't have the money? You start planning for retirement. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You have money for you men. Oh, we don't want to get married. Is the man pain? Is the woman pain? You men, do you have any money to put towards the wedding to buy that wonderful engagement ring? Do you have any money? <laughs> How are you financially today? Are you a spender or a saver? All right, number four, family area. How are you in your family life? Do you spend time with your family? Does your family only see you once a week, once a month? Is it, are you just um, what they say, existing? You only in the routine? Because remember when Corona came in, many people <laughs> dread the thought of being home with their, with their spouses because they had lost touch of, the, of, 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 the, of, of being in love. They lost touch of communicating and being really together, being one, working as a team. They just gone to the, root, gone to the routine of always in, out, whether it's nighttime, daytime, passing, as they say, as two ship in, a, in, a, in, the, in the, the, what's it called, the, of the night? What are they saying is? So when they were stuck together, whether it was by a job loss, they were stuck together. They had to come back to a place of, um, do I love this person? Do I even like them? Why are we even together? How are you with your family? Are your kids? Do you spend enough time with your kids? Are you always working? What are you from a, on, a, on the scale of one to 10? How is your family life? Number five, social life. You have a social life? Hmm? Not that you want to look man on top, but I like to stay by myself. I don't have any friends. Well, if you know I'm the friend who won't be, which one do you think one day with you? You know, I'm the friend. You know, go out, you know, do nothing. <laughs> Anyways, my personal opinion is not important right here. We have a social life. Bro. You socialize. You go out. You, 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 you plan events. You know, we're in Corona time right now, but I'm telling you guys right now, I am planning a women's retreat. As soon as everything lifts, 
I'm going to launch that invitation. I'm planning and even doing things like this with Pastor Nash to me is I'm, I'm, I'm enhancing my social life. This is very entertaining for me. It might be one might say, oh, that's ministry. But to me, min, min, hey, to do the work of my father is, is, is my food. Oh, yes. Gives me great joy. So how's your social life? You have a social life. You go out once in a while with your friends, with your spouse. You go out once in a while, even with yourself. You can go out with yourself, pick yourself, or get some ice cream. You don't even find, you don't need to have no money. You might find the money when you go out with yourself. But when you love you, somebody else is going to love you. All right. Number six, physical, or we could say health. How is your, how is your health? Are you healthy? Are you in the right foods? Are you in shape? You need to get in shape. Remember that scale of one to 10, where are you? The aim is to be at 10, but if you're not at 10, just, just really be honest with yourself. Maybe you're, you're a two. You think about working out, you think about eating right, you know, so the kitchen pack about things we're enough to eat, but it's okay. This activity is to let you think about, look at your numbers, say, you know what, we need to do better, but I know they're really, really low. You know, I'm gonna start eating a salad. I'm gonna drink water more often. You know what? Maybe I'll go walk for five minutes just to bring it up a notch. It's okay, small steps, small steps. So yes, number six, physical or health. How is your health? And last seven, your spiritual life. Do you even have a spiritual life? Do you even believe in a God? You only talk about God, sing about him on Sunday day time. And in another week, you don't even remember that God exists. <laughs> Are you a preacher of the word and not a doer of the word? Do you have a spiritual? Do you pray daily? Do you talk to your father who wants who wants you to dwell in the secret place so he can reveal secrets to you? Are you abiding in the vine? You can't abide and only go there once in a once a while, only on um, special occasions like Easter that's coming up. Oh, yes, this from April 2nd. Meet us here. Oh, yes, with Pastor Delma and some other panelists that's going to be on here. We're going to talk about the substitute, right, Pastor Nash? Yep. Yes, yes, April the 2nd. Stay tuned for that. All yeah. right. So we're going to the areas one more time. The number is up on the screen. Number one, how is your mental or your personal development life? And number two, business slash career or job. And number three, how are your finances? Number four, your family life. Number five, your social life. Number six, physical or health. Number seven, your spiritual life. If you guys are brave, you can share your numbers on the screen. You can just pick one area. You can say health. Your number is um maybe it's a two, maybe it's your spiritual life, it's a five. So just you can just share one area, it's okay. Or if you have a high area, if anybody big on bad tonight and have a 10, I don't want to share it tonight from this <laughs> in the chat. Who have a 10? Pastor Nash, I want you to share two or three of your areas that you know what? Pick one that's very low, pick one that's high, and one that you're going to be working on as of tonight. And also, I want to know you you did this activity already a few months ago. How have you improved since? My, my, I think, what was, what was number, um, number six? Physical slash health. All right. I improved there. Trust me. Um, oh, yeah. Last time I did this, I said I was going to do my workout uh, every morning. I did it. Yep. Religiously. Uh, whenever I'm kind of running late, I do it at night. So definitely. And I'm seeing the improvement. Look at my face. Look at my skin. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I definitely, I'm up to number seven there. Praise the Lord. Uh, so I'll share that number. And then the second question was what? Sorry, I asked you, I asked you what 10 different things. Okay, how about we just do this? Um, I'll ask you how you had improved. So yeah, you pretty much you answered that. I was going to say, I was going to ask you to share a low number. Share okay, a high I, I, number. I, I have a number six for question. Is that your lowest number? That's my lowest. Well, you're going good at seven years of life, Lee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very good. What is that six in? That's what I'm saying. I can't remember. I just put the, I just put the number. I don't know what the question. Oh, is. you okay? You didn't write down the areas. Okay, what number do you have? And I'll tell you what. Do you have the, the, at least a number? The the number area? two, the second one. Business slash career. Okay. Yes, I Business. don't. My job, I'm in it, but that's not where I want to be. You understand what I'm trying okay. to say? So that's why it's a six. So, you know, I thank God for it, but I see myself uh, on people's um, cable network doing this Amen. professionally. Uh, yes, saying greeting the entire world. Glory to God. Uh, yes. Yeah, so that's why that's a number six, you know, because I, I, that's not where I really want to be. Very good. Very that's good. That's six. Was your number, was your health one the highest number? No. All right, go ahead. Um, the fourth one, what was the fourth one? And then family. Nine. I'm wow, big on family. 
I have one daughter, one Nana, you understand? And I spend every second that I can with my Nana and my daughter. I'm big on family. Um, you know, I, I think it's important. And even ministry, you don't want to get too busy that you don't spend time with your family. So that's important uh, to me. So uh, yeah, I'm very big. Why it's not a 10 is because, you know, there's days where ministry calls and, and stuff like that. But definitely, um, yep, I'm big on that. So that's where I got my nine from. I know from the last time we did this, as you were very big on getting your health in order. You've definitely bumped that up. So what will you leave? What Which one are you going to work on when you leave tonight? What's your next one you want to really bring up? I said my I want to my health is my my health I want to bring it up next time I can get to at least uh, eight and a half so still working on that so the next time we visit that uh that should be that all right very good very good uh we have Jacqueline Jones says physical um is number one for her um <laughs> I say, I can't take you. I can't take you. The question for you is how are you planning to improve that? But number one, you know what? You can't improve what you don't care about. Although I'm identifying these seven areas of us, sometimes you might say, no, my health is not important. Spend time with family is not important. Right now, it's solely my career I'm focusing on. So I don't want people to feel, oh, very good. But Jacqueline Jones' family is at a nine. Very good. Congratulations on that. Yeah, we may not be a priority. So we want you to choose what is a priority and work on that number. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to open, the, open sure. the lines. The That's number sure. is in the chat. Uh, Pastor, did you, did you pin the number? I can. It won't allow me. I'm trying to. So I just put it in there. But we That's might put it again. True. What's that, Pastor Delmo? What's true? I mean, the years of life. I'm just looking at them, you know, looking at them. Yeah. Is there, is there any yeah. that you're low, very low, and are very high? Yeah, yes. Health, 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 health. I need to work out. I'll do five. All right. I'll do okay. five for that one. I will give myself a five for that one, you know, the elf, because I need to work out some more. I need to start working again. Um, family, yeah. For family, I'll give myself, I want to give myself a 10, but because I know my wife, next year I have a wife, so I'll give myself 10 next year. I'll give myself All nine now. Right, Mr. Delma, I guess. <laughs> it will happen. I just want yes. to welcome, I just want to do, um, just interject, just to welcome those who are just coming on. I want to welcome my good friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Pearson in the house. Welcome, man of God. Uh, it's good to have you. I know that you're extremely busy, still trying to get you on here uh, through, you know, hoping that, you know, you'll free up your schedule to sit in and, you know, have a chat with us. So I just want to welcome, I want to welcome also um, Patricia, I think she's on, okay colleague of mine uh welcome and welcome to all of you behind the scenes um indeed it's been an amazing night and we are getting into the meat of the matter uh so tamika go ahead and do your all right you guys the number is in the chat if you want to call in we will take your call if you have any burning questions um any question about being single you want to talk about the seven areas of life it doesn't matter please go ahead and call in we're waiting your call but in the meanwhile first of all, we just want to we are going to be coming down just now i just want to wrap up by saying a few things um so number one god is the source for us That's god crazy. is the source and anything else is just a resource that god is blessing us with so that man or woman that you really believe you can't live without is a resource so when you plug into the source Hopefully fulfillment will come from there. But in the meanwhile, there's some foundational stuff we should really be dealing with. Uh, foundational stuff such, such as how is your self-esteem? How do you see yourself? So many times we're trying to get into relationships because we have low self-esteem. I know women who don't even like themselves, yet they talk about they, they need a man. You don't like yourself, but you want a man. So if that man doesn't affirm you, doesn't, doesn't validate you, doesn't praise you, are you going to be vexed? How are you going to get along that relationship if you don't even like yourself? Now... And Pastor had a little side joke, and I don't want to say it. I'm not going to say it tonight. But um, let's say the example. If you don't even like how your body looks, what are you doing with somebody? Suppose they want to stay in the light. That's what I mean. If you're, not, if you're not happy with how you look, no look, nobody. Go fix up yourself. Go fix up your mind. Go fix up your body. And then come back. Do not pick up people with these issues where you have in your, in your heart, in your mind, or these, um, oh, I don't look like this, or I look like that. Don't take up, no, nobody wants to hear. No man, no one here, yeah, complain, how you're this, how you're figure fat, how you don't look good. How you, if, 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 you, if you see it, you fix it. All right, some foundational stuff we want to deal with. We want to deal with your heart. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to jump into um, 
for those of you who know me know that I do spiritual um, coaching. So as a spiritual organizer, I have to ask you what's in your basement, garage, and attic. I'm not going to get into, I'm not going to get very specific, but we want to deal with heart issues before joining yourself with somebody else. So as a single, and even one who is taken, maybe you got into a relationship too soon, and you're just like, you're like, what did I get myself into? But you know, you're not going nowhere. You, you know, you're going to be in it for, you're in it for the long haul, okay, until so death do you part, hopefully. So there's some things you want to look at. You know, but we can fix up ourselves whether you're, you're a single or whether you're already joined. You want to look at what's in my heart. What are my false beliefs? The things that I, I came to the relationship with or I'm going to go into or things that I've come out of that I really need to heal from. What are the wounds that you have in your heart? What are those things that maybe you feel like say, men are all like this? So we don't look man. If men are all something, the man, when you go and find it, is he part of the all? So even certain talking, we can fix up our speech and say, where I come from our mind. All these things come from our mind. So we want to, we want to heal. I'm getting rid of those um, beliefs and those thoughts that all men are this, all men are that. Um, we want to also look at what's in your what, what's in your garage. The garage represents uh, the elephant in the room. And some of we have some bad habits, some bad ways. Nobody know uh, nobody know want to deal with it. Sir. Yeah, if you know, say you're not submissive, you know, say you're brawling, you're not peaceful, you're, um, you're quarrelsome, um, you're warsome, you're easily angered, go fix up yourself. Work on these things while you're single. Yes, yeah, seek the Lord, seek the Holy Spirit. He, he, he's there to help you, help you through these things. So you can become submissive. You know, no, no, like the word, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have to become submissive. So if you find a husband who loves you, like how Christ loved the church, you're going to want to be submissive. Oh, yes. Oh, we, we believe the Bible on you. We're not talking the Bible. We see me want to get to place with me submissive. So now ask what, why not the money? We have a caller. Oh, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Good, good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to Real Talk. Hello. Hi. Oh, good evening. Good evening. How are you? You want to ask a question or do you want to answer? You might want to turn turn down your background. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead now. It's you. You need to turn down your your um your phone. Okay. All right. Let me figure this out. Okay. One moment. Okay. I don't mind. Once again, welcome yeah. to. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. We're hearing you. It's okay, we're hearing you. Okay, I'm trying to explain this to this issue here. You know how you clean your house because you think someone is coming? Right. Right. Well, it seems like you clean your house for someone from How about cleaning your house for yourself? Mm. You, you take care of yourself, you prepare yourself, you have a shower, you look nice, you groom yourself, and you feel good about yourself, and you go into your nice bed, and you relax, and you get to really enjoy you. Right. Oh, yes. Right. And it's the same idea. Right. So, yeah, you have to prepare yourself. You have to be uh, ready. Right? You have to, don't do it for someone else. Others will see what you're doing and be drawn to it. Ah. Uh, you see, you have to groom yourself just like you're fixing up your house entertain someone you have to prepare yourself to entertain someone right 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 so the best thing then is to um that person needs to learn to prepare themselves for themselves before they prepare themselves for somebody else hey talk up mm, that's powerful and guess so you are the first caller so you get the giveaway book yes Yes. I want to say I don't endorse any books going into that into that caller's home. I don't endorse any books going into 
So um, we'll get your information. Um, if you can text your information to this number, your name and phone number, and we'll call you and I'll autograph the book. Uh, it's a book called Women Rising. Um, a very, very nice book. I'm one of the authors of that book and it's a very good read. And uh, yep, it'll bring you in a mind frame to stay tuned for the next book that will be coming out from me. So um, we'll definitely get that book into your hands. Okay. All right. So text me your name and um, your phone number. We'll text this number and we'll get it. I'll give you a call. Okay. Thank uh, you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for calling. All right. All right. All right. There you have it. She said very profound. She said that um, instead of getting yourself dolled up for that. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. So she's saying that it's why don't we fix up ourselves for ourselves? You understand? Clean up your house for you, not because you're having a guest and not because, and that's what I like that. It's love yourself, treat yourself. It's okay to go. I, I mean, it's okay to go to movies by yourself. It's okay to take yourself to dinner. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? And and yeah, let's everything else fall into place. So I like that caller again. Um, you know what, Tamika, I feel like being nice tonight. I have another book that I don't mind giving. Hey, uh, so who's gonna, how are you going to give that one away? Uh, we're going to ask another question. How, um, the question is this, what, um, just tell me one challenge uh, that you're facing being single. They have to call it in or they have to write in? Call it in. All right, while they're waiting, I want to say that something like Jacqueline Jones, which is my aunt, and I want to tell a little joke about me not endorsing the book because she knows me. And as a professional organizer, she says, if I come to her house, I always do throwaway things because I, I want, I like to declutter. So that's a little inside joke when I said I don't endorse any books going in there. I want to tell her you have too much books. You have too much books already. So <laughs> you have to find a home for that book faster than that. All right, you guys, we're waiting for the call to come in. Well, the number is book. in the chat. She doesn't have this book. Pardon me? She has a lot of books, but I'm saying she doesn't have this book. Talk up faster now. She <laughs> this oh, yes. is a book of books that she want to have. Yes, yes, yes. All right. All right. So so we're going to open the line for just a couple minutes for the next caller. Just call us. I mean, you're single. Winnie, are you single? Are you still with us? Dr. Pearson, my good friend, uh, you know, hearing from you, how are you dealing? I'm not sure, sir, if you're still single, but let me know. Uh, how are you dealing with it? Call us in, get the book. Um, I have so much people on here. Glory to God. Yep, I got our information. Uh, who else is on here? Um, yeah, yeah. Who else is here? Peter Gay, do you, um, yeah, but I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, how are you, yeah, how are you guys dealing with it? It's a reality, it's the real issues. Uh, we go through challenges, if you want to call it a challenge. Uh, you know, are you satisfied? You know what, Vivian, I'm okay. I don't have a problem with being single. I'm fine. I'm taking my Bible for it. I'm going to church for it. I'm, you know, feeding, getting fat because of that. Yeah, so how are you dealing with it? Um, Again, um, single and waiting. Are you satisfied? And Tamika, I'm going to turn over to you. Uh, I guess everybody's shying away from answering. All right. So as we're waiting, if a call comes in, so this is the same. There's some foundational stuff we must deal with. As the caller says, that we fix up, we fix up our homes. We have to, we have to also fix up our spiritual bodies. This is our temple. Then we were going to church, and we same way, <laughs> same way we're going to church, and we might clean up the building. We're going to our homes to clean up. We clean up our office space. We must clean up our our temple and so I mean clean up our mind, clean up our hearts. You know what I mean? So that we can um speak well and we can act well. Um, you know, Esther, even though she went before the king and she wasn't called, she had to go through a fixing up process. So even though she didn't look raggedy and she decided to say, you know what? Whether I perish or not, she had to look a certain way. They have a certain demeanor, a certain way that she had to speak and behave. And so I said, you can get that spouse today, but that spouse may not be one who's very worthy or knows how to praise you. You've got to know how to validate yourself, how to praise yourself, or how to speak well to yourself. Positive self-talk is very good. You've got to love yourself. If you don't love you, don't expect anybody to love you. And yeah, you can find somebody who tells you they love you and they really do love you, but you'll never believe it because you don't love you. So if you're mm -hmm. single, I don't, know, I don't know if you're waiting, but if you're single, fix up yourself. 
fix up your spiritual um, house, fix up, um, get rid of those hurts and those wounds in your heart, um, renew your mind with positive um, self-talk. We're not talking about being proud and I'm the hottest thing since life, but we're not talking about that because that's not humble. Yeah, 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 we're not talking about those type of things because no, no, we're not talking, yeah, we're not talking, we're not saying those type of things. We want you to be humble and gracious and all these things. But we want you to believe in yourself that you're not, you're not comparing to anybody, you're not comparing to yourself to anybody else, but you are enough the way you are because God has created you uniquely for a purpose. Oh yes, for a purpose and on purpose. God was very intentional when he created you. You don't need, need to be with anybody else. You don't need long hair like anybody else. You don't need to talk like anybody else. You just need to be you. But if there's some things that you need to deal with and heal from, deal with them. Don't bring somebody into that because they're going to feel um, the, 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 what do you call the blunt of your, your reaction whenever um, they, 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 they touch certain buttons, say certain things. Don't treat you the way you want to be treated because they're not whole on your own. That's all I'm going to say um, for tonight. And remember to... um. And remember to, sorry, I'm reading the comments. I'm so sorry. Remember to look into the seven areas of life and see which one that you're low on. The ones that you're high in, great. See if you can improve the ones that you're low on, see if you can work on them. I want to thank you guys all so much for tuning in tonight. We thank you for the interaction, all the comments, the um, the caller that called in. We're, we're so grateful that you guys are sticking with us. And I see many of the viewers who are always, who are faithful um, each and every Monday that we come on here. We're, we're really, um, we do this for you guys. You know, we, we take our time on our day off or whenever we're working and we make sure we, we come on here. Um, we want to make sure that um, we want to nourish the Christian um, um, soul. We want, the, we, want, we want you guys to know there's, there's real people talking about real issues. And we understand. We understand. But we also believe that we also believe God's word and God's word is our foundation. And just like any relationship that you want to get into, if you decide, say, God, I take too long and you're going to look at your own relationship, that relationship is not built on the foundation of Christ. And your cancer will call God in when the man will be stressed because it was you did. You go find the man. When you, you go left, God will go find the man. So you have to build your um, relationship on Christ because He's a solid rock, the solid foundation, and everything else will stand up. If you're having problems because He's a foundation, He'll find His way in because He's a great God. He's a restorer. He's a He's a reconciling God. He He wants us. Um, He's a God of unity and togetherness. And so anything that you have him in the midst of, you know, the enemy is trying to get in. God will raise up a standard against him and the enemy will have to back up. All right, Pastor Nasha, I'm going to want to keep on talking. <laughs> ah, wow, wow. What can I say? What can I say? As I said, everybody, um, Tamika was in the driver's seat tonight and I was in the passenger seat. Uh, that's how we do it sometimes, you know, uh, it's not always about me uh, driving. But again, as she said, you know, I mean, we started off, you know, with a little humor. Uh, yes. And I, I, I mean, it's a humor is right, but it's a reality that some of us experience certain things in our singleness before we got saved, you know, uh, the decisions that we we made and the risk that we took uh, when we're not saved, we're not taking those risks anymore. Uh, you know, when we weren't saved, we didn't have guidelines or, or, or we didn't have anything to measure against. But when we when we became uh, saved now, we do have guidelines and we do have things to measure our, our behavior, our character and how we pursue and when we wait and what we do while waiting. And that's the point we want to get to tonight. And I just want us to realize that it's not a crime to be single. You understand? It's not a crime to be single. I think being single should be your most enjoyable moment of your life. I'm telling you, uh, where again, you pamper yourself, you celebrate yourself. And, and because when you do that in your singleness and, you know, if you get into a relationship or you start dating and the person doesn't do it, you're so used to doing it. Uh, you understand? You're just so used to getting up and saying, you know, I'm beautiful. You're so used to dolling up yourself. You understand? So you don't need that person to, to push you. You understand? You don't need that person to, to, to say something for, to allow you to appreciate yourself. You love yourself so much that if somebody else don't say it, you said it yourself. So that's what we're getting at. Um, being satisfied uh, you know, in your own skin, uh, being satisfied in your space. Um, waiting time is not wasted time with God. Uh, there's a danger when we step out of the waiting time and, and we go into um, unwanted territories again, because you know what, God, uh, it's been too long. So, you know, what? I'm going to give you a little help here. He doesn't need any help. Uh, he does not need any help. He knows exactly what he's doing. I uh, remember he knows his thoughts and his plans towards you, uh, glory to God. And the thing about it is I want to encourage somebody that in your singleness, he will sustain you. It is in your singleness that you develop that, that 
intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. Uh, yes, he becomes your best friend. He becomes your comforter. Uh, you know, when I, when I hear people say that they're lonely as Christians, you know, I'm kind of big to differ because I mean, if the Holy Spirit's there, you know what I'm trying to say? Sometimes I, I am in, in my place, you know, I'm thinking, Holy Spirit, you're so funny. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say? Some little things that you think and the Holy Spirit just brings something to your mind. So, you know what, Holy Spirit, you're so funny. Hey, you know, Holy Spirit, what's happening? Good morning. You know, I practice this every morning. When I open my eyes, I say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Spirit because guess what? Uh, he's there. I'm not in my bed alone. I'm not alone. Uh, you know, and so again, people might say, oh, you know what? That's spiritual. But we got to mix the spiritual with the natural because until we get that person, it's a spiritual man that's going to sustain that flesh. And I want to say it again in your singleness, it's your spiritual self is going to keep your flesh from going into bed or going into somewhere that you're not supposed to go. Uh, you understand? Mm -hmm. So, in your singleness, you understand, is where you depend upon God to keep you. You depend upon Him to comfort you. You depend upon, you listen tentatively to His voice. Uh, glory to God. So, you could be happy in your singleness, happy in God. Because remember, you're not in the world anymore. You understand? You don't have the desires of the appetite of the world anymore. Your desires and your appetite has now changed. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit to help us in our singleness, uh, to help us that we can wait for that person, that we don't cross the borders, uh, that we don't get into Egypt. Uh, you understand? See, we have no business going to Egypt. Uh, you understand? We just wait upon God. And as I was singing to um, Dedelma, I don't mind waiting upon the Lord. Uh, let that be your song. You know what, God? I choose to wait upon you because you you know what's best for me. Uh, you know who is best for me. Uh, you know if it's a man, you know all about him already. And the thing about it is, think about it. You understand? Um, you know, there's a man that's praying for a godly woman. There's a man that's praying for a woman that's fun. Uh, there's a man that's praying for a woman that's a fluffy. You understand what I'm trying to say? You know what I mean? There's a man that's praying for a woman that, you know, God, I, uh, you know, I desire to have a short, dark, nice, cute wife like Vivian. You understand what I'm trying to say? You know what I mean? I'm just joking around, but no, seriously. So therefore God is preparing you. You know what? I have somebody, but let, let me fix her up a little bit. Let me deal with some scars. Let me deal with some pain. Let me bring her up to par uh, for you. You know something? Just wait, wait upon the Lord and tell me, tell you something. When you meet, when he brings that person to you, there's going to be some fireworks. You understand? You can stay from Niagara Falls and see them going off. You understand? And you'll know it because your spirit will confirm it. Uh, you understand? When your spirit and his spirit come together. Uh, you understand what I'm trying to say? Uh, and again, I think I heard Gemma say this, you know, be careful, you know, that the flesh is not speaking to you when you're single. Uh, you understand? Make sure the spirit man is speaking. You know, get married to that person's spirit, not their flesh. Because when you get married to a man's spirit, you understand that has been regenerated, transformed, renewed. When you get married to that man that's full of God, uh, you understand? When you get married to that man, uh, you understand that loves God and, and God is embedded and stretched out in him. Trust me, you're married to the spirit of God in that man. That man will know how to treat you. He'll know how to pamper you. He'll know how to respect you. He'll never curse bad with you. He'll never cheat on you because you guys are so knitted together. Together. the two has been knitted as one it's like the salt covenant when you take a salt from one person and you you take a salt from the other person you put it in one bag nobody can find eat the, that person's salt uh, that's how you want to when you still when you get to that person you're so knitted that nothing so airtight you understand and waiting for that awesome awesome person it's worth it it's worth the headache. It's worth the tears. It's worth the lonely. And, 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 you know, again, we're coming down, but you have a lot of people that are married today, but they're single. And that's a whole nother topic. Married, but single. You mm -hmm. have the ring. You said the vows. You mm -hmm. understand? You have the man at home, but you are single. I think that's more painful than I to be single without being married. Mm -hmm. I think that's a whole lot of emotional, emotional thing going on there to be married, but yet single. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's sad. You know, and I pray for somebody today that, 
you know, that's married and you're going through that single feeling that, you know, God will work it out for you, uh, that you will really experience what it's like to be married and in love. Yes, from your spirit, not from your flesh. Uh, glory mm -hmm. to God. Uh, so I just want to say thank you to my co-host, Tamika, who thought of the title. Uh, yes, yeah, she took the show together. And, you know, again, um, I appreciate you. I appreciate your giftings and your commitment uh, to Real Talk. And, you know, I know that you have your own thing happening and going and uh, it's going to come to fruition. And that's the thing, you know, um, every great leader is always a first, a great server. Glory to God, I'm telling you. And uh, yes, I just want to appreciate you. And uh, yeah, I'm here to serve you as well uh, in the capacity to, to bring you to that next level. Uh, so again, thank you, woman of God, for tonight's show. Uh, let everybody give a thumbs up. Come on, let's give some hearts for Tamika. Yeah, those of you who are still on, all nine of you. Uh, yes, yeah, some thumbs up for our co-host, Real Talks co-host, Tamika Jackson. She wears many hats. Uh, yes, you'll hear more about it. Uh, so again, we're coming down. Uh, for those of you who are listening around the world, thank you for joining. Thank you for sticking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for engaging. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for welcome, welcoming us into your home. Uh, glory to God. It's always a privilege serving. It's always a privilege chatting with you. Uh, glory to God. Again, I want you to keep uh, our programs uh, in mind. We do have our program schedule out there tomorrow uh, at 7.30. Let's talk with Vivian. Uh, yes, uh, that's a free will conversation so anything goes tomorrow. Uh, yes. And then on Wednesday, we have our testimony service. And then don't forget Thursday, you want to meet right here, Real Talk Special Edition with Pastor Delma Francis out of Orlando, Florida. Who is he? Who was he? And who is he now? Uh, glory to God. Yes. Who was he and who is he now? You want to hear from this mighty man of God, powerful uh, man of God. Yes, from gun carrier to this, that, that. Oh, God, yes. He didn't go, the blood Step of up. Jesus is powerful. Uh, he said tonight he was a stepper. What does that mean? Uh, you know, so we'll get into the life of Pastor uh, Delma Francis on Thursday as um, Real Talk presents uh, the special edition with him. Uh, so again, thank you each and every one for listening. Whoa, for whoa, whoa. Oh, don't forget Monday to Friday, join Real Talk 8 a.m. Yes. for Rise and Shine. Ah, uh, yes, uh, we have launched our, yes, Real Talk Rise and Shine with Vivian. Uh, it started this morning at 8 a.m., yes, for our 20 minutes devotion. Uh, for those of you who listened yesterday, we talked about it's time to speak to your mountain, open your mouth, and speak to your situation. Uh, glory to God. And what you see, sometimes, you know, uh, we're tasking God, God, do this, God, do that. God is waiting. Just open your mouth and declare a thing. Uh, speak to that mountain. So we had that yesterday. And today, Today, uh, we talked about, you know, uh, let love rule uh, our hearts. Let the love of God rule our hearts. And when God's love rules our hearts, trust me, it'll transform marriages. It'll transform relationships. It'll transform communities. It'll transform governments. Uh, trust me, it will make a big difference. Because when the love of God is ruling your heart, there's no envy. There's no bitterness. There's no strife. There's no jealousy. Uh, glory to God. So again, that was today's devotion. So join me tomorrow. Tomorrow at morning at eight o'clock, rise and shine out with Vivian as Real Talk goes into the segment of devotion. So that's part of our program lineup. Go ahead, Tamika. I was going to add, as she said, something God's, we're asking God, but God wants us to do something. This morning, I was, I woke up, uh, I do uh, music Mondays, this is a DJ, I DJ music on Mondays, gospel. And the Lord, I kept hearing um, one more time, and I was thinking, what is that? What does that mean? And so she said, God is waiting for us sometimes. Um, Samson, um, when he had his eye, he had lost his eye, they had captured him. Right before he died, he said to the Lord, one more time, straighten him one more time. And God answered his prayer. And so sometimes we, God is waiting for us to ask him for one more time for that thing. God, one more time, fix my finances. God, I know I messed up in that area. I know I messed up with my kid. I messed up with my spouse. But God, one more time, you need to open your mouth. Just like you speak to the mountain. Speak to that situation, the dry bones, as Pastor Nash mentioned. Yeah, yeah, you can speak to that thing and say, God, one more time. The same way he answered Samson when he was going to die. 
even though he died, God still answered him, ministered for his death and granted what he asked. God will grant unto you when you speak to your mountain, when you speak to the, those dry situations, when you ask him one more time to restore that thing, bring that thing back to you that you may have lost or you messed up. Don't worry if you messed up. What am I saying? It was Samson's fault because I'm trying too much. And I didn't make it what girl school. I didn't make Delilah. School living all type of things. It doesn't matter. The point that he prayed. Look at J spell J J. I don't J A V E Z. Who his mother gave him a name that wasn't a that wasn't a good name. It was when he prayed unto the Lord and God heard him. It doesn't matter where you're coming from, what you've done. God just wants you to call out to him. Say, Lord, one more time. Anoint me one more time. Do it again one more time. Restore that relationship one more time. Restore my finances one more time. But you've got to do it knowing that you're going to walk in God's ways after you ask him. God does not bless mess. He'll help you out of it. But when he will, he will prosper what you're doing, when you're doing it the right way after he takes you out. Pastor Nash, I'm done talking. <laughs> You sure? <laughs> that's, a whole yeah, message. Yeah. that's a whole message there. No, that's true though. Uh, and also just to add with that and we're going, um, when you are declaring and you're decreeing something, you got to do it with faith and believe. You understand? So if you're not believing that God is able to do it, don't even bother opening your mouth. So it comes with, you got to believe. So that which you're speaking to, um, you got to believe that God is able to let it come to fruition. You understand? He's not going to do it for yourself. And as I said, some things aren't worth, some things you don't need to pray about. Some things you don't need to fast about. You just need to open your mouth and speak it. Speak to that infirmity and watch God do it. Speak to that mountain and watch it remove. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. And I want to say this, anything that is in opposition of what you need. So anything that's in opposition of your advancement in ministry, anything that is in opposition, opposing your finance, anything that's opposing your health, anything at all, you need to speak to it. That is a mountain. You need to speak the word of God. All God is saying, open your mouth and speak to it and I will do the miraculous. Peter spoke to the mountain of infirmity. Uh, in that lame man and God, what God did the miraculous. Ezekiel uh, in the valley of dry bones, God did not do it for him. He didn't tell Ezekiel to go call no prayer meet now get no tie up him head down, get no olive vial and we not like that. He didn't, he said, listen, open your mouth and you're gonna speak. And he commanded the winds and watch what God did. What am I saying? He is a same God, speak to your situation. Uh, glory to God and watch God do the miraculous. Another thing that we got to learn to do, we got to speak the word of God because oh, he yes. responds to his word. You understand? So declare what the word, he says, bring me in remembrance of my word. Glory to God. So I want to encourage you tonight. You're single and you need to deal with some stuff. Speak the word of God over your life. You're not satisfied. Speak the word of God. You're not comfortable. Speak the word of God. You're married and you're not comfortable. Speak the word. Speak the end result. Speak that which you want to see. Believe it and watch God transform it in a miraculous way. That's very right. And Pastor, Pastor Nash says, speak only the word, what you want to see. Many times we, we, we couple it with things that we don't want to see. Cindy Trim said it once, she said, if you don't want to see it, don't say it. And also don't waste time cussing the devil. Satan this, Satan, don't waste time because God, you don't, God not, can't do anything with that. You just, this is empty words. Even the angel didn't even address him. Who are we? Stop cussing the devil and See a time this devil that forget all them talking there. So go back to the pit of hell, then two minutes later, he's back out of the pit. We're cussing him back again. Yes, I mean, we've got to always speak the word of God, but you've got to read your Bible. You've got to read the Bible to know what the word is saying. My son was talking up in the air. Oh God, this, oh God, that. That's good. That's fine that you, you keep your communion with God all the time. You have to say these out all the time, but you have to know what's in the word to also group it with some of your, your regular everyday words. So that you can some you can really get um some of the substance that God has um has for you because there's some there's some key blessings in the Bible and when you read it you know about it no longer will you feel like you don't have oh man have the money no you have way for money just know yes you got worry for money <laughs> and, and you know. to believe and you got to and that's the thing too I mean we're done but you know I mean the spirit <laughs> is working but we got to understand too that it's not only speaking as I was talking in the devotion you got to believe. 
You got to believe in the God that you are praying to. You got to believe that he's able, you understand, to do, you cannot doubt. You understand? You cannot, you cannot mix doubt and faith together. It does not work. You got to believe. You, it, it, it seems like it's an impossible situation. You understand? Look at Ezekiel. He was sitting in a valley of dry bones, everything, nothing moving, nothing breathing. You understand? Nothing. I, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. And I, I, I said it before in devotion, but you're in a situation that it's done. It looks like not even fire can light that the wood. That's all it's done. And God says to you, listen, I want you to speak to, it. excuse me, you understand? Because you yourself are seeing yourself in that situation that there's no way that I can get out of this. The creditors are coming. The doctor said this, there's no way I'm done now. I, I you know what? I'm writing my debt wish. I want to eat. This is what I want to eat before I die. Bring me the pizza. Bring me because you're already done. I'm, I plan your funeral. And God says, open your mouth. I am here to do the miraculous. Lift your faith. Believe and speak the word. I can just picture how Ezekiel probably did frighten, you understand, when he spoke the word in an instant. Something takes time. You understand what I'm trying to say? But you can speak to that situation. And again, too long we look at the situation. We call other people to look at it. We call other people to assess it. And the people that were called to assess it, them walk around with it with me. Them look on it. Them do everything to it. You know what, Vivian, we can't even about this. So guess what? Now you call the next person. Them, them measure it. Boy, this too big for me. I can't handle this. By the time you finish, the entire Ontario look at your mountain and nobody can do nothing to it. Why? Because you have the power in your mouth to speak to it. God yes. gave you the authority. So sometimes we don't need to call anything, anyone. We just need to decree and declare the word of God over that situation. What does the word of God say about sickness? What does the word of God say about poverty? What does the word of God say about this? What, and speak that which is in opposition to what you need. That which is opposing uh, you from getting to that next level in your vision. Speak to it. I don't care if it's a human being. I don't care if it's a donkey a cat or a cockroach speak to it tell it to move out of the way don't babysit it speak to it kill it remove it and your mouth uh is in uh, has the ability to do that because there's power in a spoken word and that's the, that's why the enemy's trying to muzzle us the enemy's trying to keep us, our mouth shut that we can't talk because in no any day we open our mouths and with the authority on the name of jesus christ of nazareth him have to back up oh yes you understand? So some of us have been muzzled with some spiritual mask that the enemy put on with tape, with duct tape. I know it's going to mm -hmm. be painful, but I want you to rip off that duct tape. Trust me, rip it off and watch God. Uh, glory to God. So I just want to encourage us tonight. Speak to your situation. Uh, glory to God and watch God work on your behalf. We bless his name tonight. So again, I don't know where Tamika went, but I'm sure she's going to come back. Okay. Uh, glory to God. Um, yeah. So again, be encouraged, be encouraged. We give you a little bit of something in the end. I know time is gone, but I just felt that we just had to encourage you uh, with the word of God that speak to your situation. Uh, you understand in your singleness, you feel lonely. So you know what? I thank you for the comforter. Uh, comfort my heart tonight, Lord. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? And encourage yourself in the word speak to your situation don't let the devil run over us anymore he's done it too long you've gone around that situation too long you walk around the mountain too long everybody look at the mountain everybody <laughs> criticize the mountain everybody point. the mountain <laughs> but guess what open your mouth and speak to that mountain and guess what don't go around it you need to go dead say it flat eyeball to eyeball nose to nose mouth to mouth and deal with it because oh, yes. God is waiting to do the, the miraculous after you've opened him up, just like he did with the man that was lame, just like he did with the valley of dry bones, uh, just like Jesus did with the fig tree. What Jesus really did, you know, with the fig tree, and I don't want to preach it right now, but he just really spoke to something that was in opposition with what he really needed. He just mm. said, man, you are opposing me right now. You know what? You'll never again. You understand what I'm trying to say? So whatever is opposing your destiny, uh, there's something that's opposing uh, you from getting that home or, or, or obtaining that job or uh, you just speak to the thing and watch God. Trust me. I'm done. We're done. And we just want to thank God today.
we thank the Holy Spirit for giving us the strength. I was kind of feeling a little bit under the weather. I even called Tamika uh, to tell her. I really, I thought I wasn't able to make it on. And I just kind of laid back and I said, God, you know, you need to strengthen me. And, you know, I thank him for strengthening me that I'm able to come on tonight. Uh, I thank Tamika. I thank each and every one of you. And we just want to give him glory and we give him honor. I do pinch us that you were encouraged, you know, with a little laughter, with the seriousness. And then what a way to end off tonight with a word of encouragement. Speak to your mountain and watch it. Move out of your way. And you can just go on about your business. Happy rejoicing. Uh, glory to God. And you see, when you get to another mountain, you're going to remember the God who dealt with that other mountain. And that's the oh, same yeah. God that you're going to call upon. That's the same God that you're going to trust. And that's the same God that you're going to believe in. Just speak. Open your mouth and speak. Remind him of his word and he'll respond to his word. And that's why, you know, uh, when I go to prayer meetings and I hear people praying, and I know you have to couple some of your own words, but the majority of our prayers should be reminding God of his word. God, you said you are my shepherd. And because you are my shepherd, I shall not want anything. Thing. God, you said you're my healer, and I need you to be that right now. In that you said that you're my comforter, and I need comfort right now. We you gotta remind you said that you said, God, that my enemies shall not triumph over me. And I believe you, God, that you said it. You hey. said it, it will come. You gotta speak the word of a God. You said if I call upon you, that you will answer me. Uh, you said that I am blessed, God. Remember, God, you became poor that I might be rich. So I am speaking to poverty. I'm speaking to lack. Move out of my way. Get to, I'm bulldozing you down with the word of God because this is what the word of God says, that I am rich. You understand? Sickness, you need to get out of my way. You are opposing my health, my good health that I deserve. So I am speaking. You listen to me, man. Oh, you got hey. the word. And watch God work it out. So I'm going to give you like a prayer session right there. But God is a good God. I want to big up Sister Cheryl from Exodus, who's with us in the mm -hmm. house. Uh, thank you so much for always following us and encouraging, you know, oh my God, Sister Cheryl, we're going to have to have her on one of these days when we talk about evangelism and why we need to get out on the streets. You want to listen to Cheryl. She will let she will light a fire under you that you get out there. Trust me. Don't play with Sister Cheryl when it comes to soul and, and getting out on the streets. So yeah, we're going to get Sister Cheryl on one of these days to light some fire under some of our skins to get out on the street. Uh, so again, Tamika, I love you lots. Uh, thank you for uh, taking the lead tonight. Great job. And again, as we come down, wherever you are around the world, remember Jesus is Lord. Uh, remember you have the heart of a champion, the mind of an overcomer, and the spirit of more than a conqueror because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Remember you are a lit candle. Go out and light your world. Uh, glory to God. Again, remember, let's continue to pray for one another. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of a big fat. I need you to survive. Yes, I need you to survive. Uh, glory to God, because we're knitted together. I need you. You need me. Uh, again, remember to pray for souls. Remember our nation's youth. Uh, yes, remember our homeless community. Uh, remember those who are in our mental health facility. Remember those, uh, God, who are in our institution. There are candles as well uh, in a dark place, but we are the light. Let us get in there and light those candles that they may be able to light another candle. Is that all right? I pray above everything else that the Great Commission will not be the great omission in your life, that you will choose to be the hand of God extended and his voice in the earth, loving somebody back to life and destiny. As Jesus Christ says, love me with all your heart, everything in you. Uh, love yourself, right, Tamika? And then yes. your neighbor. Everybody is your neighbor, not just the person that's, that's living to your right or to your left. Everybody, the person at the bus stop is your neighbor. The bus driver is your neighbor. Uh, that homeless man that's begging you 50 cents, that is your neighbor. Oh, uh, yes. Don't, I need don't, an angel. Oh, yes. Don't turn your flesh against your flesh. Uh, glory to God. So again, it was a privilege serving with clean hands and a pure heart. Coming to you uh, live from out of Toronto, Canada. On behalf of Tanika and myself, we want to say good night. Grace, peace, and mercy be on to each and every one of you. Uh, so you're still recording. <laughs>